Hello everyone, it's Livia here, aka Story Minded, and I'm back with another book recommendation video. To the nature of this book, I will say that um, because the book itself is quite graphic, it contains um, explicit examples of um, child abuse and sexual abuse, so if that in any way um, makes you feel uncomfortable, then I wouldn't recommend watching this video. Um, so this is one of my most recent reads, and it's called not without my sister and judging by that description I think you guys can um, guess that it's non-fiction it's a memoir about three sisters Celeste, Christina and Juliana and Celeste and Christina are sisters and Juliana is their younger half sister they all have the same dad and these three um, girls at the time were born into um, the Children of God cult, which is, which later became known as The Family. And, oh God, what can I say about this book? I think I'll start with the positive side of it. The reason, um, I managed to, f well, it was actually my mum who found this book. Um, we found it in a second-hand bookshop and she just picked it up and she went, oh, and I, like, read the synopsis and we were like, we have to get this book just to because it just messes, it messes with your mind to think about how much they suffered and how they survived and how they got out and it really is a tribute to the um, the human spirit and like what these three girls suffered defies description and yet to know now that they're living their lives, they're free, they have their own family and they they got out which is incredible and the amount of courage it took them to find the courage to leave and to like just completely change their lives it's just it, it was definitely worth the read but as I said it's very very graphic um, the content and I guess I'll just sort of give you a bit of um, some background information about the children of God and sort of essentially the the monster behind who created its ideology. So, I think the children of God, and I'm sorry for any like historical inaccuracies, like when you read this book, it gets so confusing because these three poor young girls were moved from pillar to post to escape the authorities, obviously, um, and literally they could live up to like three months in a single country and then suddenly it'll be like oh we've got to move we've had word from our prophet we need to move now so they were just moved all over the world they went from like as far as India Bombay in India all the way to like Japan and it's like insane the amount of countries they lived in during their lifetime during their early years it's like oh god so um I think the children of God, from what I can remember off the top of my head, it sort of started around the 70s slash 80s, like the first generation. And with my sort of limited understanding and love of psychology, the only way I can understand how they were able to obviously recruit members is by praying. Well, this might have been before it went downhill, but they... Um, they attempted to connect with the vulnerable members of society so at the time as throughout history they went for the disillusioned youths so these were the people who were suffering from drug addiction homelessness abuse they had run away from home they just they were school dropouts they just had no future and then if you watch some of the documentaries online because there's loads on this particular cult um they would come along in their bus, they would play all their songs about hope and God and stuff and be like, we can change your life, we can help you overcome your drug addiction. And for lots of the first generation, they did. They took these people, these vulnerable people, and helped them. But the problem came when the second generation were born. So we've had the first generation, they've built up their numbers massively, like I can't even go to the amount, the amount of people they managed to recruit. But that's all happened, and then the second generation, Celeste, Juliana and Christina, are born. And this is when things start to turn really dark. So the mastermind, or more so the monster behind this, David Berg, 
um, is the founder. And unfortunately, David Berg was a notorious paedophile. And very annoyingly, he escaped justice. He died. He was never brought to justice, which really pees me off, like, massively, because he should have been rotten in a prison cell for all eternity. Um, and his second wife, Maria, they were, like, the so-called founders of this cult. But it was mainly David Berg. But Maria is not innocent anyway. Um, and he introduced very quickly into the family the law of love and essentially he twisted bible scripture to justify that sex is a gift from god and god wants to share this love with everyone including young children which is horrific sorry about that so um he justified um sexual abuse on children by saying like it's natural it's what god wants and that love is to be shared and within that you also had the repercussions of um the older members of the family could share partners so obviously like in christina celeste and juliana's case juliana was born by a different mother because of this law of love and like oh yeah you share all your partners and stuff and they had like family members scattered across the world but what was also really heartbreaking about this story is that on top of the n n just maniacal bloody law of love, David Berg instilled the fear of God, obviously, into his followers. So people on the outside who weren't a part of the cult were known as the systemites because they were a part of the system. Obviously, because if, and he used to warn them that if, if anyone from the system found out, you have to be really secretive, because if they found out about what we do, they wouldn't understand, because obviously it's unlawful, but, you know, followers, they're brainwashed by this point, so they would just be like, oh yes, our prophet has spoken, yes, we'll just, you're right, we need to be really secretive about this, because they just don't understand, and it's like, oh, so, um, and all, sorry, this video is going to be really rambly and stuff but I will say Celeste's um well Celeste Christine and Juliana their dad was very high up in the family because he wrote the scripts for the radio shows and the tv appearances that the family made um and created the radio show music with meaning which was to spread the message to outsiders to try and recruit them what's nice about the book is that Celeste Christine and Juliana they all they recount their lives because obviously these girls were separated they didn't stay together they were like scattered all across the globe and um christina got out first because her mother like her mother actually managed to leave the cult first and like steal christina away to escape um and they sort of retell all their different experiences and like juliana was in the training schools they had these horrific training schools so they didn't only suffer sexual abuse they also suffered horrific physical abuse because if a child ever like sort of showed resistance of any kind if they didn't agree with one of moe's letters um they would say oh you have the devil in you and you need to be punished and you're going against god's will and this is what god wants and you're rejecting god's spirit and all that crap to try and justify their horrendous actions and oh, it's heartbreaking they would try to tell adults and say this is happening to me i don't like it and the brainwashed adults would just turn around and they would just say well it's god god's love and it's not wrong because it is God's love and it's just oh, so sad these poor children the people they should be able to trust most in the world would just turn on them and that leads me on back to the bit about the systemites so David Berg had the ingenious idea this is going to be a really long video I'm sorry um David Berg had the ingenious idea of I'm getting really emotional now but he um, just imagine this you've been born into this cult all your life you've been taught that if you leave the cult the wrath of god will come down upon you imagine all all you're surrounded by and even if they're scattered across the globe all your family all the people you have ever known so your sisters your brothers your half sisters your half brothers your cousins your aunts your uncle everyone is in this cult if you leave you are excommunicated and that is it and you are told that you will not survive out in the in the system you will you just won't survive and 
like imagine that that would terrify you like to get the courage to be able to actually say I do not agree with what's happening here I'm leaving and a lot of these youngsters like they had to do what was known as list um listing I think is what they called it so they would have to go out and preach the word of God and like spread the message and um they didn't get very much money for it like a lot of the money was kept within the family so friggin David Berg and Maria were living fat while the family suffered horrendous conditions in these communes they were all like cramped together and oh yeah so they were just they didn't have much money to move around but they were just traveling all over the world and it was really hard for them to come to terms with the fact and be able to escape and I mean Celeste I remember particularly she was in the cult for a hell of a long time she like from her birth right up till her like early to mid 20s she was still in the cult and she managed to luckily connect back with Christina and her mother and slowly started to because they're taught to pray against any family members that leave the cult they are taught to pray against them and say they're sinful you need to pray against them so you don't adopt their same evil spirit and it was just oh and there was a word for it they believed they would turn into these demons so anything they would say would be lies and oh but the main reason why i recommend this book is because it is it's just a testament to the human spirit and as the girls mentioned in the book, so many, so many of the second generation didn't make it. Even if they managed to get out of the cult, they just couldn't adapt to life because all their information had been filtered and they haven't been taught any, they don't have a normal education. They're taught, possibly if they're lucky, the basics to read and write, but it's all filtered. It's just all Mo letters. Everything is coming from this one man. So... They don't know anything about the outside world. They don't know how the outside world works. And the main reasons why I read it because they got out and they have their lives now. And um, if you want to, like there's so much more, but I think I'm going to stop the video here. There's a really good website called xfamily.org, I think. And I think it's, at one point I think the girls actually mention it in the book, I think like a lot of ex-members set it up to try and educate people about the dangers of cult ideology and to educate people about what this, because I think the family still exists today, but the foundations it's built upon are just horrific and it's like, how could anyone get behind it if it's come from something so evil, even if it's changed now, like the foundations it was built on, just, you know, it's not worth it. Um, and they it has a lot more information if you're interested in finding out more and I, uh, it was just it was just reading this story and it was going on during like the 90s and I mean it's just it's just insane and they also lived in fear and this is the last thing I'll leave with on, on top of everything that happened they also lived with the fear that they wouldn't live past 12 years old because the end time was coming. The end time was always coming. So for a long time they survived solely on the fact they thought it's okay because the end time is going to come and we'll all we'll either all survive it and we're going to be God's Christian soldiers and we're going to save all the Christians. We're going to make the world a better place or we'll all reunite in heaven with our family and we'll be free from all this pain. And it was just, it was tragic. It was absolutely tragic. But they got out. They got out, they have their lives, and there's also lovely, well not lovely, they have documentaries online, and Christina, because she was one of the earliest, out of the sisters, she was one of the earliest to get out, she she was so brave, she went on the news and talked out against the family, which was a massive, massive thing to do, and she, she was desperate, she was desperate to reach her sister Celeste and Julie honor and everything and she would just she would fight so hard and try and say to people look this cult is dangerous it's not right and she would just share her experiences on tv so i highly recommend you seeing some of those videos and i don't regret reading it but it is a very dark read so the only reason i recommend it is because it is about triumph in the end they got out and they survived and it's about love it's about like undying love when or it's about undying love when you've when love when your idea of love has been warped and that through all 
the pain and the abuse, they never lost their love for each other. And I think it just speaks volumes about how brave they were. So I highly recommend this video. Thank you for watching. I apologise it's a long video. I am going to edit this down, but it's going to be a long one. And I've moved on to a fiction book because after reading this heavy book, I need something a bit lighter. But anyway, I really recommend it. Not without my sister. Thank you. Bye.